Oh, fucking still no tips. Good lord. The hell. Sniffle. Sniffle, sniffle. Sniffle, sniffle. How long have I been crying? I don't even know how long I've been comfortable like this. My grandfather's hand is on my cheek to comfort me. I hold the hand lovingly and press my cheek against it. Are you okay? G Grandpa. Sniffle. Ah. My grandfather puts his other hand on my head. The warmth of his hands calms me gradually. I see piles of data. It was a mistake to sort out the data while lying on a fluffy carpet. I must have fallen asleep. And I had a terrible dream. If you sleep facing down, your chest gets pressed, and you often have bad dreams. It's already getting late. Why don't you go to sleep, Miyoko? I'm fine. <laughs> I took a nap, so I'm not sleepy anymore. I'm almost done. So I'm gonna finish it up, okay? You have school you have school tomorrow. You should go to sleep, otherwise you'll get scolded for yawning again. I've been going to bed late lately. So I yawn a lot at school. My teacher must have written a note to grandfather. I'm fine. I'll go to sleep as soon as I'm done. So please let me finish, okay? Besides, you shouldn't be minding me. Go back to your study and continue on your own article. The day for him to present his research is approaching. He has been working so hard, devoting himself into his research. But unfortunately, there's a limit to what an individual can do. If he wants to continue his research on a deeper level, he needs help. He has to explain that this research could be the key to solve human mysteries and make people understand what a great work it is. But this research is about something very complicated, so he can't just share it with anybody. There will be someone to help him someday. My grandfather believes so and continues the research. I want to help him with this research, but all I can do is sort out a his data and tidy up his materials. I also help him around the house so he can concentrate on his research. He always tells me I'm a big help, but that isn't enough for me. I'll study hard, get into a good college, and learn many things, so I can actually help him in the research. I'm a mediocre student now, and I don't particularly like school, but I will do it. I want to help my grandfather. If... If his heart were to fail and he couldn't continue his research, I would give up my heart in a heartbeat. If he needs lungs, I'll give up my lungs. If he needs internal organs, I'll give up him my internal organs. There's nothing crazy about it. It's only natural. Because if he had found me a day later, I may not be alive. Either that or I may have been someone completely different. In other words, I'm alive because my grandfather came. If he hadn't rushed to find me, I wouldn't be here. So I won't hesitate to give up my life for him. Moreover, I would, I'd be more happy, more than happy to give up my life for him. Even though I want to be with him forever, human lives aren't eternal. Just like how my parents died. It happens. So suddenly, without an advance warning. I'll never heal my, from, my, from my parents' death. But now that I have my grandfather, I'm not sad. However, his existence isn't eternal either. He may disappear all of a sudden for an unexpected reason. Just like my parents. That's why I wish to be part of him. That way, no matter what happens, we will be together forever. I don't want to be alone again. I want to be with my grandfather forever. I want to help him forever. Okay. And be sure to go to sleep after you finish this, okay? Promise? Yep. I promise. I promise him. We smile at each other, and Grandfather goes back to his study. Dried up tears are making my cheeks itchy. I head to the bathroom to wash my face and brush my teeth. I see my face in the mirror. I don't see my grandfather's features on my face. Of course not. We aren't related. He must have a family too, but I've never heard about them. He doesn't seem to want to talk about that subject, so I don't ask him about it. I don't care if he has real grandchildren or not. Even if I'm not related, I am a granddaughter of Takano Hifumi. I'm not just a granddaughter. I want to be more than that. I don't want it to be a parent and child relationship, nor a lover's relationship, none of these. I want something more spiritual, 
Something that not even a tragedy can break. I'm Ta Takano Miyoko. Takano Hufumi's granddaughter. Maybe it should be Takano Miyo. Because my grandfather calls me Miyo. I want to succeed in Hifumi's spirit. If his name counts up to three, then I want to share that three with him and count to the, and continue to count to four. Today my name changes. I write my new name on the mirror. Takano Miyo. What a wonderful name for the new me. Wasn't wrong, she did change her name. Colonel, sir. Good to see you again. Takano. Come on, come on, come on, no more colonel stuff, no, no. I was worried when I heard you were ill. You look great now. Ah, ah, ah. My grandfather always told me that he doesn't have any friends. He used to tell me everyone died in the war, but that's not true. He has one very close friend. This is him, he's an elderly man my grandfather calls Colonel Koizumi. I don't know exactly where they met, but every time they get together, all they talk about is the military and the war. So I guess they meant the military. Look at you, Mio. How tall are you now? Hmm. We just had a physical checkup the other day, and... I think I've grown two centimeters. That's wonderful. Good girl. Make sure you eat well, play a lot, and grow big and healthy, okay? I envy you, Takano, for having such a cute granddaughter. Mr. Koizumi knows that grandfather and I aren't related. But he always calls me his granddaughter. That makes me very happy, so I pour a little more black tea in his cup. After I finish serving tea, I leave with a bow. I want to stay and listen to them talk, but I guess grandfather doesn't want me to hear the stories of the war, so he always makes me leave. I leave before he makes me leave. But that doesn't mean I go to a different room. It means I go to the other side of this huge living room. Although I'm not right by them, I sit on a sofa and listen to their conversation. And if they need something, I'll come help them right away. I try to earn points by doing things like that. I sit on a sofa away from them and start reading in the encyclopedia. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What well, light reading. Light reading. I read the encyclopedia as a light reading novel. It's very interesting. <laughs> we just got into the E's. That's great. The professor said that they wanted to come over on Sunday, the week after next. Really? Thank you very much, Koizumi. Don't mention it. This just that means the report you wrote was that interesting, Takano. They show much interest. They even said it's possible for this research to get a Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. A Nobel Prize? <laughs> that sounds wonderful. My grandfather laughs. Since he laughs so cheerfully. Something great must have happened. Mr. Koizumi probably showed his article to the experts at the society, and he's supposedly they're extremely interested in it. That means they recognize grandfather's research. That makes me happy too. But what worries me is that you'll get infected with the Hinomizawa syndrome yourself. Make sure you don't end up ripping open your own throat, okay? Well, maybe I'm already infected, but the Hinomizawa syndrome is harmless if you live a normal life. It was a dangerous disease when the villagers believed in Oyashiro Soma and bound themselves with strict rules. But it hardly happens nowadays. After that many cases, the emotional state has a lot to do with the development of the Hinamizawa syndrome. As long as you live a normal life, there's nothing to worry about. So then, what is under a lot of pressure, like during the war, it develops? That's right. Well, there's nothing to worry about. The subject to... Uh, the subjective symptom of the initia, initial phase is suspicion, suspicion towards everything. Very much like symptoms of depression. Once you notice it, you can relax emotionally and physically by using in my breathing method. And you should also get at least 9 hours of sleep a night over a 1 week period. That's how to prevent it. In fact, of all the Hinamizawa soldiers under my directions, not even one died mysteriously. Well, aren't you special? As he talks, Grandfather starts the Takano breathing method and a mysterious exercise. According to him, the exercise relaxes the body and gets the blood and lymph lymph lymphatic fluid flow smoothly. 
As a result, you're relaxed emotionally too. And the, but the movement of the exercise are so strange. I look away because my grandfather looks silly. I feel bad about this one thing. Oh. Grandfather asked me to do this exercise too. I don't want to make him sad, so I do it when he asks me. Hmm. I'm glad to hear that. Noguchi Hidi Hideo? Hideo? Whatever. Died in the middle of his research. So please be careful, okay? However, Noguchi's great work is still acknowledged even after his death. As a researcher, I'm sure that was a long-term goal. Grandfather tells me about Noguchi Hideo? Whatever. Often. He was born as the son of a poor farmer, but he studied hard and became a doctor. However, because of his educational background, he was mistreated, so he left Japan. He moved to the United States. He made many accomplishments as a researcher, and he discovered a vaccine for yellow fever. Is that real? Is that real? Mm, I don't know if that's real or not. <laughs> I don't know. It might be. Grandfather's background is somewhat similar to his. So, he often said he admired him the most. Noguchi Hideo, whatever, died in North America. Oh well, yeah, he moved, uh, he fucking moved, uh, um, like, the US in the first place. The vaccine he discovered for yellow fever. He heard it wasn't effective on yellow fever in North America. He went to North Africa to research it, came down with the disease, and died. Well, isn't that fucking ironic? A researcher losing his life for his research. Sometimes that is the test of a researcher's braveness. In that sense, Grandfather is very brave to visit Hinomizawa you know, himself to gather information. He himself says he may be already infected. Though to be fair, if it actually wasn't successful, then it wouldn't be a surprise if I hadn't heard of him. <laughs> at all, because I would have heard of people that were successful in curing it. He also says that although the Hinamizawa syndrome was feared hundreds of years ago, nowadays it coexists with humans just like any other bacterium. Many people developed the syndrome during the war, but that was because they were in an extremely abnormal situation. In today's peaceful environment, it's almost impossible for a person to develop the syndrome. Huh. That's funny. He sounds very optimistic, but he never brought me with him to Hinamizawa, so maybe he isn't as optimistic as he sounds. However, since I live with him, there is a possibility that I'm already infected as well. well I'm not worried at all. That's because Grandfather has already taught me that as long as I maintain myself properly, I won't develop the syndrome. I know all about the horrible final face symptoms of the Hinamizawa symptom, but I'm not overly fearful of them. Grandfather is enjoying his conversation with M Mr. Koizumi. That's understandable. Mr. Koizumi told him some people showed a strong interest in his report. They even went to come over... Uh, they even want to come over on a Sunday, the week after next, to meet and talk to him directly. Because of the rapid progress of the medical field, the unknown area is getting smaller and smaller. The Hinamisawa syndrome that was discovered by Grandfather might be a new continent. It will be decided in two weeks. That sounds like there will be more than one person coming. It also sounds like they're all important people of the society. They're all rich and famous, yet they aren't satisfied with just that. They all want to be involved with something that's worth an international award. There is a chance to gain assistance and sponsorship at the same time. I'll, g I'll see you in two weeks. I'll make sure to be here. Good luck. Thank you very much. I owe you everything. Ah, ah, ah. It's too early to say that. Let's wait until you find sponsors. When that time comes, let's have a toast with that red treasured wine. That was the last conversation between them. My grandfather keeps his head down until Mr. Koizumi is gone. Sounds like he set up this great chance for a grandfather, so I put my head down like grandfather. Did you hear that? Finally, there's a chance for me. There are people who are interested in my report. I know, I heard. Now you'll have people to help you. It's not for sure yet. Huh, huh. 
Although he doesn't want to admit it, he has a good feeling about this. All of his efforts are about to be acknowledged. Sunday the week after next. Yep, I'll be busy. First impression depends on my presentation. I have to rearrange my data. No, I probably should practice explaining things in front of people. Anyway, I have to make sure I don't forget anything. Boy, I'll be, it'll be a lot of work to arrange your, rearrange your data. Your handwriting is so bad, so maybe you should write it big. Hmm. Anyway, I'll be busy. The next two weeks will go by fast. You're right. I'll help you too. All the formaline jars have, been, have to be dusted. Also, we have to straighten the data papers too. Maybe we can put them under a rug overnight. That should fix it, don't you think? Hmm. We have plenty of things to do. Mio, could you help me? Of course. I'll skip school if I, so I can help you. No, you can't miss school. We laugh together and we pump our fists to encourage each other. Since that day, my grandfather spent more time in his study. It's not easy to create a report to show to people. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm gonna dread the day that I actually have to fucking do reports. Like, actual, like, proposals and reports. Ugh. Ugh. God, I would hate to do that. Just for the sheer fact amount of work and research that goes into it. And it's just a proposal and it might not even get approved. And it's like, oh, this fucking hard work goes to waste. Coffee machines haven't, hadn't been invented back then, so everything had to be handwritten. He knows it's uh, uh, somewhere, but he just can't remember where he put the data he needs. As for me, I have to make sure I have enough guest cups to serve tea. I count them. Like, by handwriting? Why doesn't he just use, like, a fucking typewriter? Because I'm sure it's been invented by that point. <laughs> I think after the war, I'm pretty sure a typewriter exists. So why not the fuck just type it out? Hell of a lot easier than writing it, unless you make a mistake, then you have to start over on that page. Do I have enough tea leaves? Maybe I should get something to go with tea. My grandfather knows nothing about tea, uh, these things. There's a whole list of things to do. I need to clean the windows so the room will be bright. What else? The two weeks pass quickly while we're busy getting things done. What a wonderful two weeks it is. I can finally feel that I'm actually doing something to help my grandfather with his research. I hope the day of the meeting will be a memorable day for my grandfather. I hope that day will be a beautiful, clear day. I mean, it'll be mem mem memorable no matter what. Just as I wished, it was a beautiful day. Evening time. My grandfather is dressed formally, and he walks around in his study nervously. I'm also in a beautiful dress. I've only worn it once before, in my piano recital. But I'm not nervous like grandfather. Why not? His silly nervousness actually relaxes me. Are they here yet? Grandfather looks out the window. The no black car stops in front of the gate. Back then, a car was a luxury item. I don't think I had uh, even one classmate whose family owned a car. So it is a natural that the so it is natural that the men coming out of the car look respectable. What is it actually that rare? Because I know in America it wasn't exactly that rare, like to the point that it was like oh very extremely rare. I don't think it was like to that extreme. At least in America, it could have been different in Japan. So I have no idea. So I'm just talking from an American point of view that it wasn't that rare. Grandfather and I run out, run out to welcome them. Welcome. I'm Takano. Thank you for coming today. May I take your jacket? I assist too. I'm no longer relaxed. Both my grandfather and I are supremely nervous. Nice to meet you, doctor. And hello, little girl. Are you his granddaughter? Yeah. Mio, please say hello. Very nice to meet you. I'm Takano Mio. What a good girl. I'm here in place of Koizumi. Something came up and he could he can't make it today. He's very sorry. I see. I'm sorry to hear that. The one who set up everything isn't here. My grandfather had the treasured wine ready, according to the promise from two weeks ago. Everyone, let me introduce you. 
This is Dr. Takano Hifumi. Dr. Takano was a leading person at the research center of the, for the prevention of epidemics in Manchuria during the war. He has made many advances in developing compound food and compound alcohol as measures against the malnutrition and shortages of food. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me. The men are older than my grandfather. They take off their hats one at a time to greet them. Their beards, expensively, expensive looking canes and glasses tell me there are higher up authorities in this society. Grandfather bows to each one of them. Everyone, please come into my study. Please excuse the mess. Please come in. Mio, serve tea for everyone. Yes. I wasn't nervous at all earlier, but I think I'm the most nervous one now. I'm not the one making the presentation. I'm, I'm not the one being criticized. It's ridiculous that I'm this nervous. I don't know if I should use that as my excuse. Because of the nervousness, I spilled the hot water I had ready for the black tea I bought for this day. I apologize to my grandfather and start to boil water again. I just need enough for the guests. By the time I have cups of teas and cookies ready, his grandfather's presentation is halfway done. It penetrates the spinal cord through the blood or lymphatic fluid, then through the cerebrospinal fluid and it reaches the brain. God, it's fucking physiology all over again. Fuck. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna lie, that was a fun class. Learn more about the human body than I'd ever wanted to know. I've conferred many cases of en encephalite- uh, Encepha- God damn it. Ugh. Encephalitis. Let's go with that. After autopsies. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. Eosinophilic, meningeocephalic, <laughs> what the fuck ever? Good lord, it's like you just open up a fucking medical book and point it out words. It is also considered by eel worms, its behavior is very similar. Grandfather wa walks around as he points at some formalin jars. There are over a hundred formalin jars with parts of few brains in them. They were all very dusty, so I spent a few days cleaning them. So I'm rather proud to see the sparkling jars all lined up. However, the symptoms of the eel worms are multi-branched. A headache, necrosis, uh, derangement. There aren't any specific symptoms. On the other hand, symptoms of the Hinomizawa syndrome are very characteristic. You're saying one of them is to rip open one's own throat, right? Exactly. Some soldiers witnessed it used just before their fellow soldier died. Such malnutrition was never seen before in any disease. Mutilation. It's only the Hinomizawa syndrome. Also, since that symptom is what's also seen with terminal phase patients, I think that's an exodus. Just like disease caused by some parasites. Parasites mature inside of a human body and reproduce, then leave the host and look for a new host. So what do you think about the fact that the cases were only with soldiers from Hinamizawa, even though so other soldiers touched their blood which was full of parasite eggs or larvae? Don't you think there was a possibility of them getting infected? I suspected like an incubation period, but since it was limited to the area of Hinamizawa, I think the unique local weather had something to do with it. I'll talk about that in the next chapter, but the old belief of Hinamizawa has... That can't be possible, Dr. Takano. I've never heard of parasites behaving socially. No, I mean, that is one of the revolutionary discoveries of the Hinamizawa syndrome. The elderly gentlemen mumbled to each other while pointing at the data. I finally realized things aren't going too well. We just reviewed your data. First of all, it is simply impossible for parasites to control human minds. Human thoughts are controlled by the brain, which is a work of art created by God. Humans are the only beings who are able to have thoughts on this earth. You're saying there are parasites that tamper with that. Please, that's absurd. I agree. Thoughts allow one to think about a group rather than an individual. In other words, that this is the most important prerequisite condition for a society. Parasites just can't do that. Even biologically speaking, there's a precedent, no precedent of parasites behaving socially. But, but there are cases of parasites interfering with the host behavior. You're misunderstanding one thing, Dr. Takano. The principle of parasites interfering with the host's beha behavior is based on the primitive idea of reproduction. 
Just like the example you used before, a rat infected with Toxoplasma, losing its na natural instinct to run from a cat. It's simply part of the process of switching hosts. That's just like a grasshopper being infected with a horsehair worm drowning itself. Once a horsehair worm matures, it becomes aquatic. Then what happens is it guides a grasshopper to the water and drowns it, then it enters the water. Exactly. That's what the Inamitawa syndrome suicide symptom of ripping one's throat of, own throat. For example, guinea, guinea bugs get out of the body by having the host scratch out the infected area. That's right. The purpose of all the parasites is reproduction. And what they're getting at is that it doesn't reproduce because the people that were in contact with them didn't develop these symptoms. But then to infest a human brain, well, to infest a human brain is one thing. Well, you have to get past the blood-brain uh, barrier thing, which is, like, almost... It's hard as shit to do. And I don't know if a parasite could do that, actually. But to affect human thoughts, that's absurd. In fact, that's a dangerous idea. I don't think it's strange that Hinomizawa created its own belief system. There are actually many cases like that all over Japan. So are you saying all of them were due to parasites? That they were all due to cultural reasons, except the one in Hinomizawa, which was caused by parasites? How did you prove that? N no, as I already said from the results of the autopsies I performed on Hinamitawa soldiers, I concluded many... Excuse me, Dr. Takano. I don't think you've gathered enough case studies to call it a clinical data. Furthermore, as you said, it was during the war. No, I mean, as I explained in the next chapter, the Hinamitawa syndrome develops when one experiences suspicion, nervousness, and stress and becomes emotionally unbalanced. There are more than a few cases of such self-mutilation incidences that maybe it would be prudent to su suspect some kind of commonality. But that's why it's not accountable. Maybe it was just a coincidence that such a rare case happened under abnormal circumstances like the war. Dr. Takano, you may have seen a co such a coincidence and mistakenly assumed that there was a correlation. Yep. That's a lot. You need a lot of samples before you can say definitively that there's something wrong. Not that I'm saying he is wrong, because apparently he is right. But you can't just declare something with a couple case studies. To prove that's wrong, you would need an enormous amount of clinical pathology, uh, pathology data of Hinamizawa syndrome patients. But ethically, that's impossible. The natives explain things as, curse, as a curse, but it is more likely a kind of cultural-bound reactive syndrome. And you think that is a parasite aesthetic delusional disease. I had to say this, but I think you admire the belief of Hinamizawa too much, and as a result, you yourself have been taken in by the cultural bound reactive syndrome. Actually, that happens quite often with people who research things in mysterious fields. We are trying to be careful ourselves. <laughs> Grandfather's face is gradually becoming pale. I'm stunned. We've never heard of parasites like that. It was just a coincidence that there isn't enough data. The talk goes on and on every time Grandfather says something, they dismiss it. All he can do is be silent. However, no discovery is accepted at first. I think this research of yours is one of those. Even if it is ridiculed at first, it may be acknowledged in later years. That happens all the time. And that's what happens. I mean, it's true. Usually your first attempt at something isn't always going to work out. That's just how it works. <laughs>